Let's talk about radioactive dating. This problem deals with two types, carbon dating and rubidium strontium dating. So carbon dating, this is the more well-known. Uh, you may already realize this, but our atmosphere has several forms of carbon. Uh, one of them, which is uh, the most prevalent, is C12, and it's very stable. There's another one, which is uh, very rare. It's C14, and F C14 is unstable. It's radioactive. And, in fact, it undergoes beta minus decay, as shown right here. It turns into nitrogen. Anyway, it turns out C14 is produced at a roughly constant rate by cosmic rays striking the atmosphere. And then once it becomes, once it's formed, it often bonds with oxygen and becomes carbon dioxide or perhaps it could become methane. I don't, I don't know all the things that it can get into. But the point is it's in the atmosphere and so living things are breathing it in. And as such, living organisms are going to have C14 in them. But of course, it's just going to be a tiny amount. Most of it's going to be C12 but they're going to be breathing it in. The rough, that roughly means the ratio in their bodies is going to be the same as what it is in the atmosphere until they die. Once they die, of course, they stop breathing. So they stop bringing in uh, the new carbon-14. They, start, they uh, stop replenishing, I should say, the carbon-14 in their system. So once they die, the C-14 that they have, that's it. And so it's going to start decaying. And what you can do is you can find some kind of sample. Maybe you found some uh, piece of, of tissue or a bone is more likely. You found some bone in some site and you want to date it. So what you do is you look at uh, the decay rate. You measure the decay rate. And it turns out basically from that, and you need to know, uh, say, how much carbon is actually in the, the bone. But based on that, you can determine how old, roughly speaking, uh, the bone is. Now, I'm making some, there is, I'm simplifying the overall process. There's a lot of uh, other uh, stuff that you have to do to do this measurement properly. You have to uh, calibrate. There's some calibration techniques that you need to go through, and I'm just glossing over that. But this is the basic idea. And in this particular problem, uh, we do have a bone that was found, some ancient jewelry made from bone, and we know the carbon mass, and we know uh, the decay rate. In my case, it's 20 decays per second. And so we're trying to determine the age of the bone, and consequently the jewelry. We know the ratio of C14 to C12 when the animal died, right? and we know the half-life of C14, 5,730 years, and we have these other values that are also important. Now, to solve this, there's this hint here. Assume all the carbon is carbon-12 and determine the number of atoms. Um, and it tells you that C12 has a molar mass of 12 grams per mole. So this is an approximation because not all of it, there's, there's a decay rate. So obviously some of it is C14. But look at this ratio here of C14 to C12 right here. 1.25 times 10 to the minus 12th. It's an incredibly small amount. So this approximation isn't going to change the end result much. We assume that all this carbon is carbon-12. And you go through and do that calculation, and I know you can do it. Then, once you know how much carbon-12 there is, okay, then you know that, hey, look, in the beginning, I had some amount of carbon-14. Okay. That's my n naught, And I'm going to divide by how much carbon-12 there is, and I know that this has to equal this ratio, 1.25 times 10 to the negative 12th. Okay. You know that, and so since you've calculated this, you can determine roughly, and it's a, it turns out to be pretty accurate, you can determine how much C14 was present when the organism died. So whatever it was that that's bone came from, whatever animal. And then from there, you can solve the rest of this problem. Because now you know the original amount, and you know the half-life. And with that information, you can... And you know uh, the decay rate, right? Yeah, you know the decay rate. The present decay rate, I should mention. This is not the initial decay rate. This is the present decay rate. But from all this information, 
you can figure out how old that bone is, or more precisely, roughly when the animal died, how long ago. Now, as for the Rubidian strontium, okay, so this one is a little different. So Rubidium 87 has a very long half-life. So we use this to measure things that are very old. And uh, it turns out that rubidium also undergoes beta minus decay into strontium 87. And it also turns out that this is just about the only way to make strontium 87, at least naturally, is from this decay. And so as a result, when we look at, let's say, some rock or something, and we see strontium in it, we know it came from rubidium. Okay? Now, the overall analysis that geologists have to go through is, is quite complex. We're, we're keeping it simple here for this problem. But by taking careful measurements of the rubidium and the strontium that are in a sample, you can determine how old that sample is. In this particular problem, the assumption here that we're making is that uh, there is no strontium-87 in the rock when it was formed. Now, that's a big assumption, but we're making it to simplify so we can go through and do the problem. But it's important to realize what this means. Okay. Originally, so our n naught, that's how much rubidium we have to start with. You know, we have some number of rubidium atoms. Okay. But they're going to turn, some of them are going to turn into strontium atoms. So there's going to be some number of strontium atoms. And, of course, there's still going to be in the number of rubidium atoms that have not yet decayed. Now, what we are told is the ratio of strontium-87 to rubidium-87 in the, in the rock, in our sample. Okay, well, if I divide, if I take this simple relationship and just divide by n, which is the number of rubidium atoms that have not decayed. So if I divide everything by that, I get n naught over n equals the number of strontium atoms to my number of rubidium atoms plus 1. This value here is what we're told. This, this uh, fraction, this ratio, is this, for me at least, 0 0.215. So I would put that in there, and then I would know this ratio. And from there, you should be able to solve. I just want to add, though, that this is really amazing stuff. I mean, by understanding radioactive decay and, you know, understanding other processes as well, we can determine how old things are. Not everything, but, you know, we can determine how old some piece of organic tissue is, some sample that we have, or how old some rocks are. It takes a lot of analysis. It's not always easy, but it's still pretty amazing that we can figure this out.